By default, when you're using a 2D milling strategy or a 2D adaptive clearing strategy, you're going to be machining everything within the geometry you've selected, as is the case with the current 2D pocket that I've already programmed on this part. What I'd like to cover in this video is how we can use 2D adaptive clearing to machine open pockets. The first type of open pocket we're going to do is actually going to be a pocket that's completely open to face the top of the part. So let's select 2D milling and adaptive clearing. I'll move to the geometry tab because I'm using the same tool as my previous operation and simply unselect machine cavities. This means we're going to be machining on the outside of the geometry we've selected instead of the inside of the geometry that's being selected. If we have no geometry selected at all, we're simply going to face the entire top of the part moving in from the stock contours as defined in the job setup. And we can see those stock contours currently previewed in orange. Now because we've selected no geometry for our pocket though, we will need to move on to the heights tab and define the top face of the model as the depth we're machining to. With a depth set, let's select OK. And the adaptive clearing strategy has faced the top of the part. So that's the first way we could use an open pocket. In the next example, we're going to machine around the perimeter of the part. Again, I'll move to the geometry tab. And this time for my model definition, I'm going to select the outside perimeter of the part. I'm going to uncheck machine cavities so that we're machining on the outside of the chain selected, moving in from the outside of the stock that was defined in the job setup. I'll select OK and the stock around the perimeter of the part is machined. Now, let's move on to something a little more complicated. In this case, a pocket that's open on one side and closed on three sides. Again, we're going to use adaptive clearing and the same tool so we can move directly to the geometry tab. It's an open pocket, so we need to unselect machine cavities, and now we need to decide what geometry we're going to select. Remember, the key is we're now machining all of the defined stock that's on the outside of the geometry that we've selected. I find this easiest to think about if you start by defining the stock that needs to be removed. So we're going to go to stock contours and change that definition from the entire stock boundary that was set up in the job to simply the area of stock that needs to be removed. Now we just need to define the contours that we want to machine. So select model and let's select this top face. By selecting the top face, we're saying we want to machine any stock on the outside of this face. And our stock definition has already defined the only stock that needs to be removed as being the area within the face. The only thing we have left to do is set the depth of our pocket. So I'll click that bottom face, now select OK. So with that, we've removed all of the stock we defined in this operation up to the chain that we defined as the model. The next open pocket we're going to look at is open on both sides. Again, we're going to select 2D Adaptive Clearing, move to the Geometry tab, unselect Machine Cavities, and click the bosses on either side of the open pocket. For the stock, we'll select the face that defines the stock that needs to be removed. Click OK. And the machining operation is only going to remove that stock that we've defined. If I wanted the machining operation to go over top of this pocket as well, I could edit the operation. And instead of selecting that face, I'll clear that selection and select the contour around the outside. I'll click OK. And now my roughing operation is open on both sides and finish machining the walls that were defined as my model. Let's move on to machining a pocket that's open on three sides and has an island. I'll select 2D Adaptive Clearing, move to the Geometry tab, and select the two chunks of geometry that I need to keep. I'll unselect machine cavities, and I'll define the stock that needs to be removed. On the Heights tab, I am going to define the depth that I'm machining to, and select OK. 
Again, we're machining all of the stock on the outside of the contours that I've selected. Well, I hope this little video has been a help to HSM Express users. The reason I say to HSM Express users is because I'd now like to take a moment to show the HSM Works users how you can leverage 3D adaptive clearing to fully rough a prismatic part with one operation. Let's select 3D milling and adaptive clearing. I'm simply going to go to the passes tab and turn on flat area detection. So all of the flat areas are detected and click OK. HSM Works will find all of the various levels and go about using an adaptive strategy to rough the entire part again in a single operation.